Our next speaker is Chao Yong Choing from South Korea. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Che from Seoul, Korea. It's my great pleasure to introduce my uh, technique and my product as well. And radio frequency is very common technology in dermatology or general surgery when uh, we ablate or coagulate the bleeding focuses or cutting some tissues. Because it has a big advantage to minimize the heat dispersion to adjust the tissue. The depth of tissue penetration is around 50 micron. So when you compare that with the other source of lasers, it's much less than any kind of laser. Like we can see here, and the electrocautery, and laser, YAG, CO2 laser. And also it is less than the thickness of the conjunctiva tissue itself. With this advantage, I uh, presented a, 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 this video clip in 2007 in ASCRS to treat the conjunctival cholesis, making a subcontraction, a subconjunctival contraction burn to treat the conjunctival cholesis without any excision. So these are the photographs of the pre-op and post-op we published in Ophthalmology Journal 2010. But there are a couple of uh, problems because the, uh, the conventional tip designed for general surgery is uh, too thick to use in ophthalmic field. And the second thing was that there, we can see sometimes there's a remnant particles after the procedure because it is coming from the insulated part of the shaft because it was not designed for the penetrating tissues. It only permitted to ablating the surfaces. So uh, we made and developed the uh, specialized uh, the tip and the devices for conjunctival and ocular tissues. And this tip, as you can see here, very tiny and ultra thin, the less than one micron thickness is at the end of the tip. And having a micro RF mode ranging from 0 0.2 to 2 watt compared to the conventional devices, it's less than a two or 5% that we can divide that energy. And then let's have a look at the clinical application with the micro RF uh, with devices. First, we can see the conjunctival cholesis treatment, as you know, it's very common in elderly person and having a lot of discomfort. And then there are many uh, options to treat them. So usually we have to face the uh, surgical options. Here we can see that. Uh, this is grade three or four. Lacey says we have to excise all the tissues, redundant the tissue. And I prefer to anchor the tissues onto the sclera to promote attachment onto the sclera itself. But we know that there are many complications and first discomfort or suture related problems or any as hemorrhages. So that's the reason we don't do that much. Can you turn down the sound, please? Yes, and this is a video showing that with the micro RF, I treat the conjunctival cholesis. And we can see that very easily we can control the tissues and penetrate to make a contraction burn that's enough to treat the cholesis. This is very severe case, so I applied more than 20 small burns onto the sclera. And uh, it's easy to access the perilimbar area because it has very tiny teeth and the controlled energies without any uh, risk. This is pre-op and post-op photograph. These are the photographs taken at around the one to two months later. And I have done the more than 300 cases within my clinic with this micro RF mode. Also, the conjunctival chemosis could be a good indication with this micro RF. And all these cases were treated with that. And common causes of a, a chronic chemosis are the damage to the lymphatic drainage system in the periocular tissue, such as a blepharoplasty. It's very common in Korea. And a cataract or a trauma, and, and so on. These are the photographs that we reported before. And we can see here. Six months of history, uh, chronic chemosis with a yellowish discoloration uh, can be treated very well. And this case was a Delen with the chronic chemosis was treated very clearly. And having a two years history chemosis also treated. And also acute uh, chemosis compared to previous cases, but 
and she's very young and had a, a paraplasty and cleared up that with the microarch treatment. And also lymphangiectasis could be very good indication without any problem. And also superior limbic keratitis can be treated without any excision like a previous method. We apply the, just the burn apart from a two or three millimeter from the pathologic area. So without ablating any pathologic lesion, we can treat the SLK with this microprobe. Also, punctal occlusion can be a quite interesting indication. We apply the temporary surgical closure with a radio frequency. And that could be a disadvantage. It's not a permanent because it will reopen six or seven months later. But I think it could be an advantage. We can, we can apply and additionally without any stresses. This is video showing the, how we can occlude the punctum. And sometimes we do that without anesthesia, with the only the topical anesthesia. That's all we do. To minimize the head, we apply the wet, uh, cold compressions. Just one day after the surgery, we cannot see any uh, problem in the skin. That means that we can control the very tiny energies only to make an, a, a temporary occlusion at the punctal area. We published about a statistical improvement in the Sjogren and non-Sjogren groups. And also the electrolysis of trichiasis can be an interesting uh, indication. According to previous report, there are some complications such as a uh, recurrence or eyelid notching on granuloma. So to make a successful outcome, uh, we should uh, ablate all the dermal papilla without any damaging the skin area. This is a video clip to show you the, how we can apply that. The direction and the depth is very important. And then we can remove the cilia and it will come together with the tape. Quite interesting. So, uh, make a right direction and the 1.5 to 2 millimeters is enough. And that's all. These are the photographs uh, taken at uh, three months. Uh, there we cannot see any notch or skin problems as reported previously. So we had a, a little bit higher success rate, uh, oh, sorry, success rate around the 83. And uh, there we could not find any skin complication. And uh, that is the reason we can apply again uh, we don't have any stress to repeat that procedure. And we can get a more higher success rate after the second treatment. This is final video clips to show you. And to remove the conjunctival nerves, it's very common in Asian persons. And the, uh, with the tiny energy, level two is around 0.4 watt. And with this energy, we can erase the uh, conjunctival nerves without any difficulties. And thinking about the algon laser we applied before, uh, it created much uh, depth of a burn, and we cannot apply the shallow pigment. It is quite easy to use the microRF. In summary, uh, microRF has many advantages, minimizing heat dispersion in many ocular indications, and it could be a safe and effective option. With this code, you can connect to the more video clips and my uh, contact points. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Cholong, very interesting uh, product instead. Does it need approvals by authorities when you bring it into a country, like HSA or FDA? And yes, so thank you uh, for your question. We got an FDA 510K or so CE mark, and uh, within a short time, uh, we can launch it within Asian countries. Now, at the moment, we sell the, the product to the Japan market and Korea. Do they have to have uh, approvals by the government? You have to, to, sure. to go. Just one question about the conjunctival calasis that you treat. Are you at risk of developing symblepharon or cicatricial yes, that's changes? A yeah, we also had a, a, an indication. We also treat the symblepharon, and we don't have any fear about the symblepharon after treatment of calasis. We can treat the symblepharon with that machine because it makes a surface burn. So, uh, avoiding to adhere 
after the Swiss break. Okay, interesting. Any comments? Or? Dr. Chal, do you have any experience uh, of, of fibrosis or scarring of the conjunctiva in this procedure? Yeah, that's a good question. So previous um, method, using a conventional radio frequency, sometimes we uh, experienced a, a very huge uh, granulation scar on the surface of the conjunctiva because it, the energy is uh, too high. Even if we lower, the lowest level is one watt or two watt. So it's just so big uh, to a tiny tissue, especially in the elderly person. Thank you very much, uh, Chol Young. So our next speaker is